Well, I'm talking to Defa Minister Geoffrey Boot, and it's about initiatives that are coming through the climate change emergency, which last week there wasn't one, or whatever it was, two weeks ago, now there is one. Uh, and we're going to come to that, but let's, okay, I'll, I'll play ball with you to start with, because, you know, the, these three fantastic schemes you're coming up with, uh, tell us about them. Should we start with the energy efficiency scheme? Well, we launched that some time ago, but it didn't get any traction. It's being refreshed, isn't it's it? It's being refreshed. Uh, it's, it's almost like launching a new scheme. Um, we, we, we didn't message it well. Um, the income limits were not really well explained and uh, it now applies to anyone that single person earning up to 29,000 a year and a couple 43,000 a year. How many people would that be? I'm not sure. It's a a don't know. considerable amount of the population. I think right. we did a calculation it's saying like 18 or 20 percent of the population. Right. Um, and, and go on. So they will get what? A uh, a th up to a thousand pounds uh, for energy efficiency improvements to their homes. What hurdles do they have to jump through to get that? Uh, not really hurdles. There's an application form. Obviously, you have to prove that uh, you're doing these things and spend the money on on the improvements that uh, are proposed. Uh, I think it's a good scheme. I think it'll help. Well, uh, it's already been out once. You got no. You didn't get enough traction, so something well, wasn't the, right. Well, the messaging was wrong. And uh, the, what does that mean? Though? Since then, what, the agenda PR has or? moved. The IPCC report. Uh, mm. There's a new emphasis on climate change and uh, energy efficiency and it's pretty obvious that uh, around 80% of the homes we have today uh, will be with us in 2050 if we're serious about going for zero carbon by 2050 uh, then we're gonna have to improve these homes right, I'm gonna come to all that in a minute I want to go through your stuff first so the energy efficiency survey what's that well that's about having a, a, an air tightness test carried out on your home and a, a general assessment uh, of uh, your energy efficiency. Uh, we'll give up to £100. Uh, the average survey costs uh, 250 to £300. Um, so it's still going to cost people money? Right? It will cost people money, but at the end of the day they may save money because there will be suggestions there uh, on how to improve your home. And it's not just about spending money, it's about saving money for the future. If, if you s spend a £1,000 now, um, over the next three or four years, um, you're going to save a lot more money. So you put, uh, they say, two or three hundred pounds for the survey, they get a hundred pounds back, they, so it's costing two hundred quid to find out that the house is okay or not okay, then they've still got to do the work themselves, or, do, or does that come under another scheme to, to do this? Well, they might qualify for the energy that, that efficiency one, scheme, right. yes, um, or even if they don't, it will inform them because nearly every older house will have some deficiencies in that, that, that can be improved on. Okay, and the retro ideas competition, retrofit ideas competition. Well, that because of this eighty percent of our houses will be with us in twenty fifty. That's about having a look at what we can do with the legacy stock and how we can improve them uh, the best way we can. Improve the skill set for people. We've got to you know, bring on people that are able to do these things. Five thousand pounds, reasonable amount of money, um, aimed at architects, uh, building contractors, and maybe private individuals who come up with good ideas and good schemes. So well, it'll be interesting to see what comes out of the woodwork. I trust some of these things I'm going to ask you now won't come necessarily under you, but you know, the, you know the going to electric cars and that sort of thing. Um, isn't this sort of needed one sort of area of government now to bring it all together rather than you doing your thing, another department doing their thing? Is, is that well, not a better working, way forward? We're working across government. Um, we're working with DOI, MUA, um, looking at strategies, smart meters, for instance, electrification of the Isle of Man, electric vehicles, active travel, all these things are coming together. Um, yeah. And uh, I mean, like electric vehicles, only because, uh, yeah, I know got a woman, but if you want to get there, the rate between midnight and seven o'clock, you have to get a meter put in, which costs 400 pounds or something, which would take seven years just to get that back. Shouldn't those sort of things be initiatives that you should be offering those as incentives? I mean, I'm not, you know, just because I've got one, I know, but I'm just, only because I know that, that's one of the well, things. Well, we are talking to the MU uh, about their pricing policy and that they are aware of some of the uh, hurdles around that. Hurdles, yeah. Those, yeah, that's, but, that's but the, the, there is a load um, it's a, a sort of factor that has to be taken into consideration. You can actually uh, charge most electric cars, it's a slower charge from an ordinary three-point uh, plug. But if you want the faster charge rates with a higher load factor, as I understand yeah, it at the moment, you need to uh, get a, a, a special a, rate between improved. midnight and seven, but you have to have a, another meter put in and they want to charge you for that. So right. well, yeah. well, that's something I, I can't have a comment on. <laughs> yes, yeah, <laughs> I'll, 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 I'll look into that, because okay. I'm looking at an now electric let, car at the moment. So. Right, and, and it's great because there's free charging points around the Isle of Man, which is what you, I thought you would say, is that the bonus <laughs> Side, well, I, th I think free charging that can't uh, go we'll, on, we'll, can we'll have to move on Absolutely. because uh, it's a bit of an anathema. And I, I understand there's a point in Ramsey where two or three cars monopolise it all the time yeah. because it's free. Yeah. Anyway, what about Daphne Kane's big um, 
thing for Timwell this week. How you, know, you sit next to her and all that sort of thing. What sort of relationship have you got with her? Because it seems to be frosty from time to time. She's, I mean, yeah, I know she said it's the chief minister's in the firing line probably to, on Tuesday. But what, what's your take on this whole thing? Well, I, I think she brought the motion forward, and I, I, I accept that, that she's coming from the, a, a good place in terms of what she wants us to do. But we'd already launched the climate change uh, consultation, and the results were almost in. Uh, that's informing a strategy and a climate change bill, which we were going to do anyway. Uh, the chief minister, 10 days ago, uh, announced that the active travel uh, launch um, that uh, we were now accepting a climate change emergency and that we were going to do the climate change bill and the underlying strategy. What people have not realised is that we did have a strategy and it's still running at the moment 2016 to 2020 and we've delivered most of that strategy but the reason IPCC announcements have moved the agenda forward and changed the, the goalposts as it were so we're now working to new timescales. How green are you? I mean, come on, let's face it, you, 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 use your, you, you have a propane usage, that sort of thing. You've probably still got the diesel car. You, well, it sounds like you, you think about going electric. I mean, you, know, you had Ralph Peake and co uh, talking about down there at uh, Quarterbridge. You didn't seem very keen on that. Come on. Are you well, really on side on this whole thing? I'm very much on side. I mean, I believe very passionately in, in clean air um, and I don't think we have a real problem on the Isle of Man with air quality and in fact the Chief Medical Officer um, we're talking to her at the moment to find out whether they, there is perceived to be a problem most people don't perceive that when it comes to green credentials it, change takes time um, I have for instance for, okay. for our, our own home um, which is an old uh, Manx farmhouse uh, over the, the last few years uh, new roof insulation um, double glazed windows, a lot of air tightness going on. Um, we've still got an old boiler, but I'm, I'm looking at uh, an air source heat pump for the future, and I'm looking at electric cars. In fact, having seen your electric car, which I quite like, <laughs> right. I, I may well buy one of the same type. And only five pounds tax, as far as I'm aware anyway, on it, that's what, that's what it stands out. I mean, anyway, there's, there's lots of improvement, do you not think? I mean, seriously, I mean, we're just, Piggybacking a lot of the stuff on the UK, aren't we? Just following well, that I think lead? We, we, we can lead in a way, um, but it's symbolic because the amount of CO2 we, we produce on the island is around 800,000 tonnes a year. And if you compare that to, I think it's 370 million tonnes in the UK as a whole and 36 billion tonnes worldwide, we're, we're, we're minnows. Well, but I've seen the maps. I mean, we're not in, on it. We can't we, we, be. The, we, we the, hardly the pie charts we hardly get register. That doesn't mean we shouldn't do our bit. Absolutely. And with our biosphere status we should lead um, but we don't want to car crash our economy uh, in, in terms of doing this we want to follow what happens elsewhere if you look at you want to follow what happens elsewhere. well we have to not we lead uh, we can lead with the, with our policy um, but when it comes to electric cars we don't manufacture any cars so we have to wait for those cars to sure. come available well, we could have been a leader in this whole thing couldn't we I mean you know, short, gen short journeys is what the electric cars were doing well now we are leading better. I think you, you'll find within the next few years uh, I, I know at least 10 people that are looking at electric cars at the moment and they're all saying the next car mm. I buy will be an electric and car. I know the problem will have some sorted out eventually but at the minute you know, the, the C terminal and that sort of thing hasn't yet put any in. They were promising them ages ago. Still nothing happened. Well I think something will happen. The yeah. DOI are, are, are moving forward on that with the MU so uh, th there will be movement right. on that. So back to Tuesday. Do you think it's going to be a debate over Daphne Keynes? Well it will be a debate. Maybe. Or do you uh, think it'll be shut down? Uh, Coleman will just shut it down. Well no we don't, no, we don't want to shut it down. Um, right. I, I've got a government amendment which acknowledges uh, uh um, Mrs Kane's uh, motion uh, which takes it further and, and uh, talks about the things that we're already doing and we're going to do and one of the things we would really like to do and uh, in the next few weeks indeed is hold workshops for all Timwell members so that they can come forward with their ideas and uh, their realisation of where we are and we can work on a, a strategy uh, that will uh, sit under the climate change bill uh, that we all buy into in other words let's have a look at what they want us to achieve. A bit like the programme for government, we had a unanimous uh, approval from all members when we brought that forward and I'd like to see the climate change strategy uh, work in the same way. Okay, and, and sorry, just go back to the electric cars one more time because I suddenly realised, you know, in the UK there's this three and a half thousand pounds, I think, now rebate. On the other hand, there's nothing. Is, is, that, is that not a, a major mission to try and get people into electric cars then? Uh, Should there not be at the same discounted rates or, or better to try and encourage people? Um, I would like to do that. 
but financially it's, it's a difficult one uh, to address. Uh, the reality is I think that most people who are buying electric cars are not buying brand new electric cars, they're doing like you did, mm -hmm. they're buying one that's uh, slightly but If I wanted used. a new one I couldn't get the discount. You can't get the discount but if you <laughs> buy one that's slightly used yeah. you benefit from the discount so on the other the side. So that's the UK paying the discount and we make... Well you could yeah. put it like that. It doesn't uh, quite sound like we're being as green as we can be but anyway that's a debate for another day. But anyway, you think Tuesday will it'll be an interesting? But it'll be an interesting debate. Right. It's going to tease out some of the aspects of uh, climate change. It will also enable me, as a uh, minister for the environment, to talk about the agenda uh, involving uh, the membership uh, of Timwold as a whole yeah. in developing a strategy based on and uh, informed by the consultation that's just closed. Over a thousand people responded, wow. which is big for a government consultation. And finally, then, if people want more, just go to the government website, right, and they can find out all the details about those. those they can indeed, yeah. yeah it's, it's, it's all on the website, so oh, at least I hope it is.